Yeah, and they're really good for being able to talk to the internal stakeholders at the, the customers as well, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, any visual tool like this is really effective in communicating uh, with, with stakeholders and uh, higher-ups. Hello there, I'm Bryden Oliver for SSW TV, and we're going to talk about customer journey mapping today. And with me, I've got Jaden Alchin, one of the UX designers here at SSW. Hello, Jaden. How are you? I'm great. Thanks, Bryden. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. So you've been uh, doing a bit of work with customer journey maps. Do you want to explain what a customer journey map is? Yeah, so a customer journey map is a an artifact or, or a user journey map. Uh, is an artifact uh, that allows us to kind of capture and represent visually the user's journey, um, what they're experiencing, what they're doing, and what they're thinking during the uh, process of of using a product or service. Do you have one we can we can walk through and see how that fits together and works? Yeah, sure. So here uh, you can see an example customer journey map. Um, we have Emotional Eric uh, shopping for a new car. Um, uh, the user persona at the top is really important. It's good to have a primary user to kind of empathize with. Um, you can see who they are, uh, what their goal is. Uh, you can see here as well expectations. And below this is where the uh, map proper begins. So we have the customer stage at the top. Uh, consider, explore, compare, test, and negotiate. And then below that, we have the, the user or customer actions or steps. Um, this is what, what are they doing during each of these stages. And then below that, we have what are they thinking or feeling during each of these stages. And you can also see here, uh, we have like an emotional curve uh, visually representing the ups and downs of the journey. Uh, and this is really helpful for um, you know, finding pain points uh, and places for improvement. So where it goes down, you might try and intervene somehow and add something to, to help the user. Is that, that one of the really useful bits of this? Yeah, absolutely. So wherever it goes down, um, especially if you can capture those thoughts and feelings really accurately, um, it's really easy to see that there's room for improvements and uh, opportunities for growth. Okay, so how does this help in the software design process other than identifying the pain points? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really helpful tool for uh, communicating with stakeholders. Um, it's really helpful for understanding the, the user's needs and requirements is, is really the core of it. Okay, do we use them much here at SSW or are they? Uh, we use them a little. Yeah, we use them a little, but we could definitely stand to use them more. Um, both at the start and kind of during the development process uh, where we can capture, you know, requirements early on, but also that room for improvement and opportunity for growth uh, during the process as well. Yes, so that this one sounds really useful. There's another sort of map called a service blueprint. Do you want to take us through one of those? This is for a very similar purpose. Yeah, sure. So here we have a service blueprint. Um, and as you said, it's a, it's similar but different. It's a little more process oriented than user oriented. Um, lots of lines and boxes. Uh, you can see the customer journey is just one lane uh, at the top here. Um, we also have you know employee actions, the technology involved, uh, backstage backend actions, and support processes um, along the left there. Uh, the line of interaction at the top between the, the customer and the front stage, that's uh, representing the interactions between the user and the front end uh, technologies, the things that the user can see and interact with and touch. Um, then we have the line of visibility, which is separating the uh, here color-coded blue and green, um, the front end things, things that are visible with the back end uh, things that are powering it. Um, and this is a really helpful artifact for rep representing the, the processes involved, uh, the people involved as well. Um, you can have backstage uh, users as well as front end users. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a really great tool for figuring out exactly how all the, all the moving pieces fit together. Yeah, this looks really useful, particularly in a software development process where 
in a sprint, you could implement, say, one of the boxes or a box and a line out of it and understand how it fits into the, the end goal of the product. Absolutely, yeah. And, and early on, uh, doing you know a first pass of these um, generates a lot of questions. It's vastly useful, especially uh, understanding uh, very complex uh, solutions. I presume it also um, takes you to some of the, the corner cases that you may not think of, like getting support and what, what to do if things go wrong and exactly all of those so, parts of the product. Yep. So many use cases uh, captured in this kind of artifact. Um, things, things you wouldn't usually think about as being part of the customer process, like support or providing feedback or, or that kind of thing. Yeah. So do you think we should be using these more? De definitely, yeah. Uh, they're so useful in trying to capture requirements, needs. Um, uh, yeah, just seeing how all the all the parts fit together. Yeah, and they're really good for being able to talk to the internal stakeholders at the the customers as well, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, any visual tool like this is really effective in communicating uh, with with stakeholders and uh, higher ups. Thanks for the chat, Jaden. This has been very useful. It's been great to learn about what customer journey maps and service blueprints are. And this is Brian Oliver signing off for SSWTV. TV.